Room Tone Podcast is a show produced by us. Three movie nerds shooting the shit while talking about shooting the shit. Each episode builds upon the last, so we recommend starting at the beginning. Now, let's make a movie. Oh my god, did you watch Barry yet? Yeah, dude. Episode two is no, crazy. No, don't say anything about I'm not episode say two. Anything about it. <laughs> I, I, already, I already know, but like, it's crazy. Oh my god, episode one was so fucking good. He's I missed so him. so unhinged. <sighs> If you guys aren't watching Barry on HBO Max, shame on you. Get, shame on you fucking people for not watching Barry. No kidding. <laughs> get your shit in line. Yeah, you need to be watching it. It's the, the best show on TV. <laughs> the funniest, darkest, most emotional show. Oh my god, it's so good. Just do it. I people. feel like it's constantly like surprising me. It's, it's constantly challenging it, itself. Yeah. And it's always better than it was the episode before. Yeah. Absolutely. It just builds, and it's just so good. And it will change your mind on how funny situations can be. Yeah. Is this where you gained your love for Bill Hader? No. No? When did you gain your love for Bill Hader? It's what chapter it? two. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I, we had that exact same conversation, like episode three. Yeah, did we really? yeah, we totally oh, did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's chapter two for sure. But no, he's like he is so good. Yeah, in Barry, it's no just kidding. unbelievable. Yeah. Like, yeah, really, boy is. deserves a fucking Emmy to the moon. He already has an Emmy, but he deserves more. <laughs> he deserves a lot he's more. He's so good. And so, so for people who don't know, it follows in part this like school of struggling actors in Los Angeles, and it is one of my favorite things to like watch actors be bad at acting. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like watch actors act like bad actors it's is so good. Is so goddamn fun. And Bill Hader's face is so funny. Like he's just so good. <laughs> he's just so good at everything. I, I will say I feel like that's not like a fair synopsis because there's no. A lot I want to give a synopsis. Okay, oh, yeah, please do. So Barry is a story of a hitman who is depressed and just doesn't want to be a hitman anymore. He wants to be a good person. <laughs> yeah. He's a good guy, and basically he kills an actor. He ends up joining an acting class. And discovers his passion, but he sucks at it. <laughs> he's so bad at acting, and he's so good at killing people, and those worlds just do not combine. <sighs> so if that doesn't hook you, then I don't care. You still need to watch it. And, yeah. it's, but, and it's Bill fucking Hater. And That's it's true. Bill fucking Hater, Henry fucking Winkler... Stephen fucking Root, Anthony Kerrigan. I fucking love Noho Hank. Yeah. Oh my god. And yeah, Hank is like the best character. Uh, and who plays Sally? Sarah Goldberg. Yeah. Yes, Sarah Goldberg does a very good job at being Sally. I just hate Sally, which Bill Hader, you always say this in interviews. I know you're listening. You always say that you are Sally and I don't I don't see it. I think you're way nicer than her. I think she just has a kind of cold heart and I don't think you have that, Hold sir. On. Yeah. Bill Hader says that he's Sally? Yeah. He, like, says that, like, her, like, personality is, like, based off of him. You're being hard on yourself, man. He is. I can't imagine that at all. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. So, no. You're perfect. (laughs) Bill Hader. I can't believe you didn't come to our wedding. (laughs) Yeah, what the fuck, We invited you, man. You know what? He was probably working on Barry. It's okay. And Maddie, is Barry not the best wedding present we could have gotten? It is. And pause for room tone. My name is Austin Swain. I'm an animator and video production specialist working in uh, commercial advertising, and I have been sucked <sighs> into a bagel. Oh, nice. God. Good, good, good save. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Longer pause than I wanted, but yeah. I'll accept it. <laughs> yeah. It, it said in my notes, parenthesis, pause for reactions. Yeah, well, you got it. Y'all, de- got y'all it. delivered. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do, baby. Ugh. That would have gotten a douchebag jar <laughs> for sure. I've been sucked. Uh, I know that line is from <laughs> Everything Everywhere All at Once. Which Maddie and I finally saw, and gosh, it was fun. It was super fun. Holy shit. I felt like I, my knees were weak walking out of that movie. <laughs> Cause he got sucked. <laughs> I guess it was a good that, suck. It was a good suck. My that knees were weak. Was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> this damn bagel. This side of the Mississippi. You ever fucked everything bagel? <laughs> it's 
it's it's pokey. It's pokey, <laughs> but that's the sweet part. <laughs> yeah, the soft inside. <laughs> My name is Austin Arpeza. I'm an amateur filmmaker. What's a good fun fact about me? I still have this shitty voice. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? I yeah, can't believe I, your voice doesn't sound better. Yeah, I know. How many people have told you to get well soon? And no you one. just said, fuck you. No one, <laughs> no, one. No, no one told me to get well soon. Everyone's told me, wow, you sound like shit. Yeah. <laughs> people are mean. Yeah. <clears throat> Cold hearted so they've, people. They've, do, they've done this to you. They're the ones who got me sick? Apparently. Well, I just keep making out with everybody. <laughs> Wait, That'll everybody? Yeah. What the heck, man? So yeah, I'm, I haven't been made out with once. <laughs> well, hold on, guys. Hold on. Your time's is coming. All right, we're going to pause the episode here for a, just a brief respite. <laughs> for, <laughs> for a brief makeout sesh. <laughs> <laughs> Pause for makeout tone. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, my name is Maddie, and I would like to tell everybody about the family of birds that we have on our deck. We have two cowbirds, a boy and a girl. They're totally a couple. It's really cute. And we also have two morning doves who also seem to be a couple. And we've decided to name the cowbirds Greg and Lori, and they're very aggressive. Yep. <laughs> but Greg is a sweetheart. He totally lets Lori eat. Good intro. Good intro. Uh, good, good intros, everybody. All around. All around. Well done. Swain put a clapping clap audience. Mm-hmm. Woo! So let me ask you guys a question. We've all worked customer service, right? Unfortunately. Yes, yes, Unfortunately. yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Can you tell me your favorite customer interaction story whether it's good or bad no i can't <laughs> i can't put that on the air also i'm gonna get really heated <laughs> so my customer service experience was uh working at taco bell for mm. a few years while i was in high school uh honestly one of the best jobs i've ever had that's insane that you say that i hate fast food fast food working sucked i thoroughly enjoyed the fast-paced atmosphere that's uh, the free food and honestly, like I just kind of like I was a shithead high mm-hmm. school student and I worked with a bunch of shithead high school students. So like it was a vibe. So I worked a drive through primarily. And then, you know, I had friends that worked on the line and would make the food. One night, uh, one of the women who was working the line that night walked in the door in a huff. And she basically comes in saying this fucking asshole driving through the parking lot just like cat called me out his window and like called me a hot slut like something crazy like that and we're like oh what the fuck so this guy comes through our drive through and orders some food and the woman that he just like cat called is now in the restaurant making his food and is pissed and so she takes it upon herself as any good citizen would to spit in one of his burritos Oh, wrap it up for him. Put it in the bag all nice. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty solid. Definitely yeah. one of my most memorable stories. That's uh, fair. Working at Taco Bell. And yeah, I I'd ha- I had to respect her for it. That's I, that's valid. That's valid. I also worked fast food in high school. I worked at McDonald's, though. The war. The, the war. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord. And my story, I was working breakfast for the first time, Sunday breakfast. So we had the church crowd and a lady orders a sandwich. I bring it up to her, you know, tell her to have a nice day. All that jazz. Beautiful interaction. Like 10 minutes later, she comes back and similar to you, she was huffing. She was upset. Yeah. She looks at me and she holds out her hand and in her hand is like one bite left of the sandwich. Right. And she looks at me and she says, this isn't what I ordered. And I looked at her and I will say, I've had a mouth when I was a kid. I was kind of an (laughs) asshole. Uh, And I feel bad for this now. But like, I looked at her and I looked at the sandwich and looked back to her and I'm like, how many bites did it take you to figure that out? And she was furious. She flipped shit up. That's a valid fucking question. Dude, that's a fair question. (laughs) Fuck you, bitch. She like screamed at me, told me she wanted to see my manager. My manager had to take me aside and say, yeah, that's not what we do. (laughs) 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 So that's like my, one of my favorite customer stories. That's great. Fuck that. I mean, what were you supposed to do? Say, oh, sorry. Let me get you another sandwich. Yep. That's fast food living. Yep. If they Gross. have a complaint, you just replace. Just, you ever to, just to get them out of the house? Pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. Huh. No, I haven't worked fast food. Fuck that. Because mm. I would not be able to contain yelling at people. Dude, people are too fucking awful. No That's kidding. fair. I did work at a pizza place, though. Oh, yeah? What was one of your favorite interactions there? 
my favorite or my like any good stories any good stories <laughs> so i was working like the late shift and a guy came in and he was like being super flirty mm-hmm. and it was very annoying obviously so i was like just trying to get through the interaction you know whatever and then austin our dear austin swain <laughs> what up? like this is like within like Less than a year of us dating, probably. Yeah, right. And Austin and a f- another friend of ours come in, and I, like, see Austin, and but he's, like, in line. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like this funny, like, I know that I'm being flirted with, and my boyfriend just showed up, <laughs> but, like, he doesn't know that yet. Yeah. So, like, I thought this guy was going to fucking, like, leave it alone, but I basically, like, ended up, like getting him his pizza and like ringing him up and he was still fucking hitting on me. Eventually I was just like, actually my boyfriend is standing right over there. (laughs) And the guy turned and Austin's just like standing at the end of the line and just waves at him. (laughs) Sup bro. Yeah. I was like, what a fool. Yeah. So maybe stop flirting with me, (laughs) but it was very funny. Cause I mean, and it wasn't like, let me be sure this is clear. It wasn't like, cute nice guy flirting mm. it was like oh nice ass like oh, it was like so gross shitty, yeah. like it's not like yeah it was it was pretty upsetting yeah mm. oh you should have hit him though that's about that would have been hot i really i really <laughs> missed that opportunity you really I? did now no now i don't go out of the house past 9 p.m so there's <laughs> never an opportunity uh, we should though i'd really like to hit somebody yeah, I should just dress really slutty one night and we should go out to the bar. And I'll be just hide in the shadows and yeah. wait for somebody. <laughs> Swain will also be dressing slutty. Well, well yeah. of course. I'm in the shadows. Dude, of I'll punch a bitch. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so last time we went a little bit more in depth in what is happening within the various scenes of our short film. We got to the point where... We know what's going to be happening during the beginning. Uh, We're going to be starting things out with the title sequence. And then we establish that Carol will be opening the door, inviting David and Zoe in. They go through characters, introduce everybody until they land on good old Papa Ronnie and find out Ronnie is dead. God bless his soul. Mm -mm -mm. And then we start getting into the conflicts. We, We go into our pairings. We talk about how... We want David and Donnie's conversation to kind of set up the conflict, a um, little bit of character building, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. Uh, and then we paired off Zoe and Nicole. Nicole latches on. Nicole latches on, <laughs> uh, establishing she's an unreliable narrator. And then we go to Carol, uh, Lonnie, and Johnny, uh, where we're kind of discussing their various addictions. Yeah. Carol the boozer and mm-hmm. Lonnie the stoner. Yep. Getting that established. And so I think in our outline, we had kind of moved then from there into um, kind of further developments in conversation. The group kind of splits off again, goes off into different pairings. And, uh, you know, we have Lonnie and Johnny steal off to the garage for a little puff of the Sheba. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Nicole probably drag Zoe into the into the kitchen and uh, they have a little they have a little discussion And, uh, you know, David visits with his poor grieving mother (laughs) for a moment, all before uh, the dinner we're all here for. All right. Who do we want to start with? Let's talk about the garage scene. Lonnie and Johnny stealing away for a puff of the Shiva. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you guys picture the look on Johnny's face being when Lonnie, like, invites him out to the garage? Because are we still playing with the idea that he, like, kind of is, like, has a crush on his cousin? Just, like, in... Aunt. Aunt, sorry. So it's better. (laughs) Yeah. Just, like, in that, like, little kid type of way. Yeah, I think he admires her. I think he thinks she's cool. I think we could chalk that up to, like, an adolescent crush. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, how old's Johnny again? I'm pretty sure Johnny's 15. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's fair. They got weird crushes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so and Lonnie's cool and she's super cool. So I also see him as kind of that, like quiet talks to himself, doesn't really want to be involved in the room kind of a person. And so I've always imagined the look on his face is kind of like a quiet acceptance, like a eh, better than this room, mm. like kind of shrugs and like, yeah, cool. Let's do it for sure. 
about what's funny. Right. Um, Johnny, we decided will be a Dudley-esque character. Just more of the background, very just kind of spacey in his own, doing his own thing. And who's who's Dudley for the audience? Dudley is a character from the Royal Tenenbaums, which I highly recommend anyone to watch. Uh, a classic Wes Anderson. I would say like... It would be really fun if Johnny was just kind of in his own world. Mm -hmm. Totally. Just doing his own thing. And I would say showing evidence of that throughout like the beginning until it leads up to him smoking pot. And like when he smokes pot, I think would be really funny if like he like gets grounded and starts like understanding more of like the situation. Yeah, I see that. Mm -hmm. I also seeing I mean, I think this entire family uh, has like a touch of sarcasm. Yeah. To them, like they it's their blood. And so I could see it might be kind of a funny sequence if she like invites him and he kind of like looks around confused, like kind of shrugs it off a little bit. And then she says something along the lines of like, unless you got something more like exciting in this room and just to like get a close up of his face, like look around like, nope, I don't know, like has this kind of like. (laughs) <laughs> no this room sucks mm-hmm. and and then mm-hmm. follows her i i imagine i can also imagine uh lonnie just grabbing yeah johnny. <laughs> to- totally true totally, totally. and yeah. like just saying like come with me and like johnny's such like a passive like character that like he's just gonna do it yeah right. you know? especially with his like yeah with his admiration towards her yeah i oh i think that'd be really cool if like whatever like lonnie does we see Johnny just kind of mimic just a little bit, you know, just and it doesn't have to be like, you know, flip of the hair or whatever. It's not like wild. Like we can like have, you know, Lonnie the way like she's holding the the joint. Uh, it's like, you know, with her two fingers. But and before, like Johnny's like holding it by like the tips. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, but it's like thumb and index. Yeah. And then he sees that and he like switches it. Right. Yeah. He's like trying to look cool. <laughs> yeah. That would be funny. Yeah. Like you, and even like really subtly, like you see her smoking it that way and then she mm. hands it to him and he grabs it and like kind of quick does this little like shift up to mm. hold it like she does and then like kind of is looking up at her while he smokes and shit like that. Yeah. Like so, super subtle. So what's the point of this scene is my question. What are we getting out of it? What information are we getting out of it? For me, I kind of feel like it's totally for like a comedic artsy element. Mm. Because I think we can get really fun with the shots mm-hmm. of, like, seeing point of view of, like, the stoned characters. Mm-hmm. Like, I think just, like, having Johnny, like, warping out and, like, having, like, cool stuff, like, visual effects happen would be really fun. Mm-hmm. And just kind of, like, a break in, like, the tension of the rest of the film to, like, have sure. someone who's just like, ooh, wow. And... I also think that it kind of just builds the relationship between, like, the two outsiders. Like, Lonnie and Johnny don't really have, like, a huge group with the family. So she kind of takes them under his wing, and it's almost like she's being, like, the cool aunt Mm -hmm. who's, like, trying to, like, make him feel better about being there. But I don't know. I see it mostly for, like, artsiness and funny. I agree with what you're saying. And I, I want to do artsy mm-hmm. and, and literally like what you're saying, I could see that too. Mm-hmm. I do think there needs to be purpose though. Something that like helps further the story. And I think what we could do with that is uh, we can get Lonnie's perspective on the family and kind of make Johnny this like empty vessel that Lonnie can like pour her thoughts and her feelings to. And Johnny's just, yeah, you know, being yeah, Johnny I doesn't really sure. do much with that information other than, being there and like letting her vent. Do you think we really care what yes. what Lonnie feels? Yes. Do you think Lonnie cares? I think so. Well, I mean, I feel like that it could be like a front where like she's like to like her siblings. No, like she doesn't care. She's very like, yeah, whatever. Sure. But like to Johnny, to this person who's uh non judgmental and is kind of a, a recluse similar to what you said, Maddie, mm-hmm. kind of an outsider. Mm-hmm. She feels like she could vent uh, her feelings to this, to this person. And I think that also, if we wanted to get really artsy with it, it also shows David not really understanding him and Lonnie's relationship or, or, or romanticizing it. Like, yeah, me and my sister were so close. We're like this, but she's yeah. not willing to tell him her, her gripes, her, her um 
troubles or stresses or, you know, what makes her feel anxious. Mm -hmm. I can see that. I can see that, especially like in the way I was having kind of a hard time at first. Like if she kind of like mm. breaks down and is like venting. Um, but like taking a step back into like more of what I saw, like what I see Lonnie as mm -hmm. from our past conversations and like kind of like the spiteful, sarcastic, like snippy way that she mm -hmm. would be like bitching about the family. Yeah, I could see that for sure. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to make it come off as like she's like crying and no, blowing her heart. Out. Right. She's, That's my fault of like of perception. I definitely think she still tries to keep up her like cool persona i just think that we are exploring the siblings we're exploring david and we're exploring donnie mm -hmm. and i think it would be a crime if we didn't explore lonnie and like what she true is invested in, in all of this right I what like is she feeling i feel like she feels separated from them you know but like not in a way that david is i feel like he's she's separated more so just emotionally but not physically She's physically there um, and she's still like part of the family or whatever, but it's very like very uh, one dimensional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. or two dimensional. Like, they don't yeah. get me, man. Yeah. Yeah. She just kind of like she's there and like people only expect her to be there mm -hmm. and not really like any input or, or, or opinion. If I, that makes sense. I just don't think that's Lonnie's character. For sure. How do you think she feels towards mm -hmm. the family? I think she hates the family and the family kind of hates her and they just like live in this like, well, they'll still be around each other. But like, I picture her and the mom like arguing about who's the bigger fuck up, like mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like, I don't know if I necessarily see her as being like, oh, my family doesn't understand me. Like, I feel like I'm outside of the group, you know, like I would say that she doesn't care about that necessary or i don't know that's tough i have i have a idea mm -hmm. uh that might help to solve this we've been focusing a lot on her relationship with her siblings and with her mom mm -hmm. uh but probably one of the most important relationships to establish now is her relationship with ronnie mm, that's fair yeah that's with true her dad because mm -hmm. we did we were peppering in how uh, how mm -hmm. big and because we tough need as many character. chances mm -hmm. as we can get to establish mm -hmm. how these kids feel about dad before they're sitting down at a table with him and having mm -hmm. an argument about him. That um, makes sense. I'm looking at the character sheets right now. Um, so we had written down that Ronnie had really loved Lonnie as his only daughter. Mm -hmm. Like she is kind of daddy's mm -hmm. little girl. That's still how I see her. Yeah, I appreciate that. You know, we could make it like she's upset that Donnie isn't letting her help. Mm. like that's like her conflict yeah like she's like i i love dad just as much as whatever mm -hmm. and like maybe the way the other two siblings see her they kind of just blow her off a little bit not mm -hmm. necessarily like oh she's not important but more so like her opinion is going to be with us so like why bother asking yeah that's a i can see that you know and or like, that they just know that she won't care, so they don't even ask. Yeah. Type of thing. Right. Yeah. She's always kind of branded herself as like the distant, apathetic. So. Right. So maybe they just don't even bother to like include her and stuff, but she mm -hmm. actually wishes they would. Yeah, yeah. Especially when it comes to like. Daddy. Ronnie. Yeah. Yeah. Daddy. Because mm -hmm. I could see her too. Like in his life, I could see that he always kind of had her by his side. So for mm -hmm. like big family events like this, he'd like sit her on his lap while he smokes a stogie and he'd yeah. like bring her around the event and kind of like entertain her and all this. And yeah. so now she's kind of lost. Yeah. Like, what do I do at a family gathering like this? Like, man, I wish my fucking brother would like let me help or something. Yeah. And I think this would also be a good time to like hint towards like, the funeral like what if she says like and donnie won't even let me help prepare the body like what kind of shit is that mm -hmm. he was my dad too and it's like yeah wait what yeah we yeah. do we do have to get a little bit of that in there yeah so i think that's also like a perfect time to foreshadow that yeah that's mm -hmm. perfect yeah i think that's great yeah hell yeah cool and i think and again like i think johnny's just kind of there listening but almost a little dumbfounded by how cool she is yeah mm -hmm. and, and is like tweaking out yeah, i really want out. him to be tweaking out yeah i totally see like to piggyback on your original take on this scene i really like the idea of pretty much just stoned johnny like being the comedic relief because mm -hmm. after this scene, throughout the entire rest of the movie, he can be like this ditzy, starry-eyed mm -hmm. fucking goofball, and we're and like we, the audience, know 
that he's like on Just drugs stoned, like, yeah. pretty, like for the first time or something mm-hmm. so I, I like that kind of establishing that you know he's the bounce board we learn a little bit about Lonnie and we now set up the joke any jokes to come with r- regarding Johnny's yeah. state mm-hmm. a backboard is the perfect way to describe it like if we ever need like a Some joke. comedic relief. Yeah, just throw in, like, Johnny doing something weird because he's high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, there's, there's a, a te- scapegoat. There's That'll a te- cut the tension. <laughs> there's a, te- I, I, uh, one of, one of Maddie and my, Maddie one, and of, I's? one of my favorite, one of Maddie and my favorite Family Guy episodes. A great Family Guy episode that Maddie and I watch as much as we can <laughs> is, uh, Sea hell, seahorse seashell party. Yeah, <laughs> this uh, was a disaster. <laughs> season ten, episode two, rainy day at the Griffin household. Uh, so Brian decides to do his shrooms. Oh yeah, and he I've trips balls. But there are some great shots, like as it's kicking in, mm-hmm. where the family is having like a crazy intense argument, and literally it just cuts over to Brian, who's just staring down, like waving his hands in front of his eyes. Yeah, and it's just that like quiet questioning that you can see in a person's face, like on the outskirts of something serious. That is so goddamn funny. Right? I agree. Yeah, that would be funny. So I I like. The idea of letting Johnny in on that. I also really like the idea that like Lonnie smoked just as much as and oh, she's yeah. Johnny. Fine. Oh yeah. yeah, just chilling. And yeah. she'll still like probably be the responsible one of the night. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's how I see it. Totally. So, does anyone interrupt this session? I believe Donnie's the one who interrupts. Really quick, and thank you for bringing up Donnie. Or. Sort of bring up Donnie. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me to bring up Donnie. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to propose a different idea of the relationship between Donnie and Johnny. I think Donnie should actually be proud of his son, but it's like misguided proudness. Like, like, like he is delusional of like how great his son is. Like he's just like my boy. Oh, he can run a uh, uh, hundred, you know, hundred miles in ten minutes, whatever. Yeah. Just yep. whatever. Like he's like the strongest, fittest, whatever. He got a part on the play. He was tree number three. That's right? pretty Do you know funny. Heart, you know whatever. That's just, pretty yeah, funny. Like very proud. I feel like that speaks more to his character of like himbo. Himbo. Yeah. 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 Totally. And like. Even just the idea of like boosting your kid up, mm-hmm. maybe in the back of his mind, he knows kids shit. Yeah. But he's like boosting him up in hopes that one day he'll find greatness. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think it's almost, and I'm sorry that you won't know this, but I think it's almost more like Frazier and Niles and Martin where like Martin's like, oh yeah, I can pretend that they're talking about going to a baseball game, but they're actually talking about going to the opera, right. like that type of thing, but not like in a mean way. So he's like, yeah, Johnny, I can imagine you going to the baseball game in a couple days. And Johnny's like, yeah, no, I'm not going to though. Yeah. Like he's always like pushing on him, but never like, he's, he's just, never saying that like he can run. He's just really <laughs> intense. Yeah. Like all the time. Yeah. I imagine him, like if Johnny was in a play playing tree number three, that Donnie's going to go He's get still going to bring seats. the camera. Yeah, He's going right. to get a fucking sign that says, you're my, like, you're my boy. I'm proud of you right. or whatever. Yeah. And he's gonna be ridiculous. Like he's in a sporting event. Like everything is a sporting event to him. Right. Where he's yeah. just he's streaming. a super Whoa. fan. Yeah. yeah. That's Donnie fair. is everyone's super fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, and he just doesn't quite align with Johnny's interests. Yeah, and I think David would be a really like fun vessel to kind of see clearly to um Donnie's delusions of his son, where like Donnie's just like hyping him up and right. like we just cut back to Johnny stoned as fuck looking at his hand. <laughs> exactly. My kid's so fucking smart, man. Yeah, he's like <laughs> sure, sure, Donnie. Bumps his hand. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> he's like playing with the water on the side of his cup. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Making trails. Making bubbles with a straw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, like that's what I think he's perfect for. Yeah. I don't think we need to know too much about his whole dynamic totally, i think we yeah. just need to like have him be funny mm-hmm. so do you see then like donnie kind of pokes in and is like oh my god you guys i imagine donnie opening the door seeing that and like being like what are you doing are you crazy and then saying something outlandish like you have football tryouts in a week what do you think the coach is gonna say berating him like in a way that's like hey buddy what are you doing this is a bad choice 
or I don't know, or maybe even like being like the drugs are going to kill you parent. Like again, kind of playing off his, his romanticism towards like how dangerous drugs are because Ronnie specifically weed trying to figure out what's the funniest. I don't think someone should catch them. Yeah, I don't know I if I need Lonnie that. I think Lonnie and Johnny are the only ones who should know they're stoned. I like I like the idea of no one knowing that Johnny's stoned because mm-hmm. I feel like that makes the rest of the like the rest of the movie funnier. Mm-hmm. I agree. I'm kind of on the fence, but I feel like that's the best comedic relief. Is like no one knows Johnny stoned, and we the audience just see him like floating through the background. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then Donnie's like, "Snap out of it! What's happening, man?" You know what could also work too. Mm-hmm. Say Donnie still like opens the door and like comes in and sees but the weed is in Lonnie's hand yeah and like Donnie's like oh Johnny I'm sorry you gotta see my your yeah. aunt being such a criminal or whatever yeah true and like not realizing that Johnny is just <laughs> and then Johnny can have flashbacks <laughs> of like being in prison <laughs> oh and that would like heighten his anxiety yeah too, exactly because, like he like, can start like thinking he's gonna go to jail yeah and like he's like or I was thinking more like 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 he doesn't now he really doesn't want to tell his parents mm. because he saw how pissed Donnie was at Lonnie. And so he's like, oh, shit, I got to keep this to myself. Yeah. And it's just trying to, like, hide it as much as he can. Mm-hmm. I can see that. Yeah. I think at some point we have to transition from their scene to dinner. And I think it's kind of boring if they're like. All right, well, the joint's done. Let's go have dinner. Yeah. So I, I to- think that we could do like David or, yeah, maybe David or Carol open the door, mm. see them in there, realize they don't care enough to actually step in, and then just close the door. And then, like, that implies that, like, they're probably going to, like, come back to the party. Maybe. I can. <laughs> I don't want Donnie to answer the door. I think it's going to become weird if he does. All right. I mean, I'm down for like David and he just maybe he just kind of like laughs and is like, uh, dinner's ready. Can I ask why you think it's weird that Donnie's walking in? Because I don't think he's going to be cool about it. And I think it's going to take up way too much time. I don't think he's going to be cool about it either, but he's going to not be cool about it towards Lonnie and like just kind of like shoving Johnny away. I could even see him like qu- like quickly like grabbing Johnny grabbing the joint in Lonnie's hand, throwing it on the floor, stomping it out and like moving and just like quickly getting out of there. Super fast, super clean. Like, yeah. Just really like, uh, uh, what are you doing? That's my son. Well, you're smoking around my son. You're crazy or whatever. Something, something simple. It doesn't have to be like a whole lecture. See, it but just... Donnie would give them a whole lecture. Now when there's, when there's like a time frame, so we, it, he could be like in a hurry. So say like the So dinner. maybe he's like, you like, I'll fucking handle you later. Yeah, <laughs> like I, something like that. Perfect. I can definitely see that. Yeah. And how funny would it be if like, cause you know, like Donnie during this time is like getting ready for the event or whatever. What if, like, when he, like, walks through the garage, he's wearing something completely ridiculous, oh completely my God. new. Like a fucking apron or yeah. something? Or, like, oh a ceremony. Like, covered in blood? Or, yeah, or, like, a ceremonial, like, robe or whatever. Just very, like, culty. And it's just, like, yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> and so then we get, like, the shift of, like, oh, things are about to get weird. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, do you guys think we should do robes? I don't know. Like, cult robes? I don't think so. I don't... I don't I'm not against it. Yeah. But I'm also... Very, 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 very open to hearing anything different. I have really liked from the beginning, like the war, like the traditional funeral wardrobe, mm-hmm. especially like if by the end of the movie, it's all disheveled and like shitty looking. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. I think it brings like a level of like surrealism mm-hmm. if they're like doing weird shit, but they're all like still in suits. That's fair. And like little things like that. That's fair. Wait, so I- are, are we having Donnie still in a polo and khakis? We have not talked wardrobe at length. Okay, so I I also wanted to pitch this idea too. Sorry, I'm been once you said cult, I'm like idea, idea, idea. What if what Donnie's wearing the khakis, the polo, whatever is the outfit that the cults wear? Like, to, <laughs> like, 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 like this is the uniform. This is the uniform, and he's still for it because he's still about the cult, not realizing it's a cult, but more of like this is my religion. That would be really funny if we ever show like flashback photos, yes. and it's all like super old pictures, and they're. <laughs> Still wearing, wearing khakis and polos. Oh, okay, that's funny. <laughs> like uh, in black and white photographs. Yeah, that's <laughs> really all, funny. Like, fucking dads. I can also imagine too, like all around the house, a photo of just some random dude 
and like various like poses and like scenes and like a, the establishing, but not establishing that that's the cult leader. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's fair. I can see that. That's really funny. But yeah, I think we can commit to that. I don't think his outfit has to be like super over the top culty. I mm-hmm. think it's more funny to do it like that. Yeah, what if we great. have like a, a crown made of sticks <laughs> that like he wore like, like uh, anything to just kind of show like, oh, we're about to like go into the family tradition. I'm down for like a portion. little decor on the dad, I think. Yeah. I think that I think Yeah, decor on the dad for sure. But otherwise yeah. their outfit is the khakis on the polo. That's fair. You know? Or maybe like a little symbol on yeah, his head. Yeah, I board. think on the dad we can do all that stuff. Yeah. Because yeah. okay. like that's like the ceremony of putting him to rest. Mm-hmm. That's you know? how I feel. I can yeah, like I could see him getting dressed up somehow. Oh, we can do it on the throat. Like a symbol on the throat. Ooh, that's sexy. That'd be cool. I just want to throw out this one thing. So are they black khakis? No. no they're khakis. Because khaki. isn't the whole Family in black, all black. Yes, but uh, Donnie has a black polo on. Yeah, I thought we were doing black polos. And, but tan pants. Yeah. Yeah. I thought they were all in all black. Not Donnie. Not Donnie. Why though? Because he's because he's for the he's still for the cult, and he, he only has khakis, yeah. <laughs> khakis and polos. Doesn't that? I mean, if you're for it, I'm for it. But I feel like you were really on top of like the aesthetic of like the whole family in all black, and our uh, and David and Zoe stood out in their wrong outfits. Mm. I do agree with that, but I think that the black shirt will suffice and i think that it's funnier that he doesn't have black pants (laughs) i think it's funnier that he's the guy who only has khakis yeah especially if we could tie it to the cult like outfit yeah i still think everybody else can be in black and then david and zoe can very much not be wearing any black right like blue and pink or something Mm. right and then Donnie's black shirt will still fit in with the vibe of everybody else in black. Yeah. And if that's not the case, then we can change his pants, but Yeah, yeah, totally. All right, cool. Um Tits. So so now we're on <laughs> back Let's go to Nicole to and Zoe. Nicole in and the Zoe. other room, Nicole has dragged Zoe into the kitchen mm-hmm. to start uh, preparing some of the meal, I guess. Mashed yep. potatoes. Making mashed potatoes. Potatoes. Is anybody else as obsessed with this shot as I am of like a hard cut close up of boobs and then a zoom out from the boobs? Like from another scene? Yeah. And we just cut in. Like Johnny's like takes a hit and then we hard cut and it's boobs. Like from here. (laughs) And then you hear Nicole go like, does this look weird to you? And then it like zooms out. You see her like holding her shirt up in front of Zoe. And Zoe's just like, uh, what? <laughs> I think that would be really funny if, first of all, yes, I think that's a great smash cut. Yeah. Um, I would love to see it with, oh, the video nerds are going to yell at me. I can't remember if it's a J cut or an L cut. Uh, anyone from video class? We're going into a scene. We hear the audio of that scene before we cut. Oh. I think that's an a J cut. I don't remember. But Does not matter. No. Mm. I think it would be funny if, so say we're coming from Lonnie and Johnny, and like Lonnie hands the joint to Johnny. We're on Johnny, and we hear Lonnie say something like, does this look weird to you? And then we hear Zoe say, what? And then we smash cut to tits and we hear Nicole say, does this look weird to you? And then we zoom out fast. That's fair. Like kind of that like trippy interweaving of dialogue between from one cut to another. Right. If we don't want to do a hard cut on tits, it could be a hard cut on Zoe without seeing Nicole and then a reverse shot. Of Nicole just standing there holding her top up, <laughs> which can, is funny too. I can yeah. see that <laughs> yeah. a little bit better. For yeah. sure. Especially if we cut to Zoe and she's just like wide eyed. Yeah, and she's like, uh, yeah. what? Yeah. Does yeah, this look weird to you? Really What's funny. happening? <laughs> <laughs> what is she what is she asking what what looks weird? Like is she pointing at a particular like mole or is she like Point at her like areolas. Sure, let's do a mole. A mole. Okay. Yeah, let's discuss the details of the tits because I know we've kind of gone back and forth. Is like, 
Is melanoma, is that where we want to go with this? What's melanoma? Oh, like skin cancer. Oh, okay. Like, oh. is this mole weird? Oh. Yeah. I mean, she doesn't have cancer. It's not melanoma. <laughs> right. I think she's just crazy. So, I- <laughs> how funny would it be if it was Marker? <laughs> and she she was doing that just to like get attention. Oh my god! And we could literally have Zo- like have her be like, "No, look at this. Look really close." And like have Zoe like lean in, and then like cut to her talking to David, and have Zoe be like, "Dude, she drew a mole on her boob. <laughs> <laughs> like, who are these people? <laughs> She's trying to convince me she has cancer." <laughs> I could also see like Zoe looking in and like rubbing it and it like rubs off and she's like is that marker it looks like chocolate yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and then like nicole smacks her hand she's like never mind and don't like, touch it because she was like wanting the sympathy right <laughs> oh exactly. yeah because she's yeah. hungry for attention yeah. yeah oh i can see yeah that. and she's just mm. fucking weird yeah. and wants to like yeah Oh, and it's it'd be just, funny yeah. if, like, later on, too, like, we see her, like, put, <laughs> like, another dot. <laughs> I think it would almost be funnier if she, like, drops something on her boob and doesn't realize it and then, like, gets super convinced that she has something. So she's like, Zoe, mm-hmm. what is this? And Zoe's like, I think it's chocolate. And she's like, no, no, I don't think it's chocolate. No, I think that it... I've been feeling very weird lately. Yeah. Like, It's not chocolate. It's got irregular edges. Right. And then, like, <laughs> maybe at another point in the night, like, during the dinner, she, like, takes a spoonful of something mm-hmm. and, like, drops another thing. And Zoe's like... You just did it! <laughs> you just dropped something else on your boob! Like. Oh, it's gonna be hard to choreograph. <laughs> True. I could also see it going this way, where Nicole accidentally, accidentally, I'm putting quotations. <laughs> <laughs> For you listeners at home. On her shirt, Zoe points it out. Nicole says, oh my gosh, I'm so, like, clumsy, haha. <laughs> Zoe trying to, like, comfort her, like, oh no, it's fine, it happens to me all the time. And as she's, just, like, saying that, Nicole like takes off her shirt like completely goes to the sink and like rubs it out and like it's just kind of like staring at her <laughs> oh <laughs> no Com- and like not wearing a bra just nothing. eye just, contact yeah. just uh, out staring her down so how did you and David meet <laughs> <laughs> oh that's, that's un- funny too that's intense yeah I like that <laughs> that's fair <laughs> that's so fucking off putting yeah cause like again one it's like holy shit, could you not have done that in a bathroom? (laughs) Right. And that comes back to just kind of that, like, odd, like, character action that just, like, makes you question everything. Yeah. Like, do you guys, I don't know if you guys remember the short film that I showed at, like, the very beginning of this show when we kind of talked about, like, okay, like, what kind of ideas are we looking at? And uh, the one that I had brought in was, like, they're like hanging out in the kitchen and she the woman is just standing there with dry spaghetti like talking and she's just like slowly snapping off pieces of spaghetti and like dropping it on the floor what is this (laughs) i have no clue what you're talking about i don't remember i don't remember the story but i see what you're saying of like this character is just kind of unhinged and doing weird shit yeah and the tension is building up with the weird shit yeah, it, yeah. The the whole like vibe of why I brought in the short film was there was just like weird shit happening with the mm-hmm. characters that was not mentioned, touched on, highlighted at all. Like it, she was just like staring at her friends, and in the very bottom of the frame, you could just see her like crumbling dry spaghetti like onto the floor and it's like no human would do this but mm-hmm. you're just like in this weird surreal world, and so yeah, to have Nicole just like whip titties out in the middle of the kitchen and go on as normal. Yeah. I think that brings like that icky kind of vibe. I think I, I I was just thinking about this too. One, maybe what if we didn't start with like tits? What if that was like the end shot? What if like it starts with the conversation, they're cooking, whatever. Um, we find out uh, Nicole probably killed Ronnie. <laughs> definitely killed. Definitely killed <laughs> Ronnie. <laughs> drop something and we end it with like her taking off her shirt rubbing trying to like rub like the staying out and then looking at zoe like oh so how did you and david meet like, oh my after- god i hate when you do it <laughs> it's so scary <laughs> i hate it oh my god do it to him <laughs> oh no <laughs> 
Oh God! So for the listener, Nicole, <laughs> <laughs> we've got our cast. Yeah, Austin is just making eye contact with us and, and vigorously thrusting in his hand, <laughs> scrubbing, scrubbing his shirt, an imaginary shirt. Yeah, <laughs> not just like stroking <laughs> my cock. Oh God, damn! <laughs> Uh, no, let's be out. clear. Austin, <laughs> Austin is not stroking his cock. We'll keep that in. <laughs> yeah, thank God there's not a camera Just in here. Just in case they were wondering. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so I, I, I see that as, like, ending the scene. And that way, like, you know, like a question like that that's, like, really odd and, like, personal ending that way i think is funny i think it's mm-hmm. just so funny because like she's just rambling about her life and then eventually after her like <laughs> tits are out and just cleaning she asks her like oh what about you yeah <laughs> what that's have you fair. been up to yeah. and then it that. cuts there and then we don't even have to like go into detail about right. how they met it can just literally cut there and so we like yeah that's what? a good cutaway to yeah. another oh. one of these situations that's going on at the same time for sure uh for those who remember the super smash bros melee with uh, Captain Falcon, when he had, whenever he did like this big move, uh, he had Captain Falcon had this line, "Show me your moves," mm. but he said it like super. You know, you know how Captain Falcon is. Yeah, he's like American homeboy, so he he does this full on like, "Show me your moves." <laughs> Uh, and it sounds it, like boobs. Yeah, in nice. the old game, it totally sounds like "Show me your boobs." <laughs> <laughs> and I did every single time. And yeah. uh, here Cap- you go, Captain Falcon. When Captain Falcon asks, you fucking deliver. <laughs> Falcon punch me. <laughs> <laughs> Falcon piss me. Whatever you got to do. Yeah. Uh, cool. So I feel like that's what we're touching on. That's what happened. That's the purpose of the scene. We're. Oh, that was the other thing I was going to say. The reason why I feel like she's like freaking out. Not freaking out, but like. Oh. Nicole, I think the reason why Nicole decides like, oh, I got to watch this right now is because like she and this could be like a brief like uh, uh, line. Uh, she doesn't want to disappoint Donnie in the photo you know, or like or whatever. Oh, like, yeah. like, like, like Donnie is not going to like that. But I guess I, I'm a little bit towing the line on that because it, it almost sounds like he's like super abusive and right. like, she, like he's going to hit her if. He doesn't. She doesn't clean. All right. Yeah. So I don't, maybe that. Doesn't I don't know if she cares. Because isn't she gonna kill him? Yeah. I mean, she's trying to kill him tonight. Yeah. So she probably doesn't care to like impress him in the photo. To be fair, I think she tries to kill him every night. Yeah. Well, she can't be trying that hard. <laughs> I just. I think she's just really bad at it. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> she accidentally killed Ronnie. Yeah, but I mean, she hasn't killed anybody else. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. maybe she tries to kill him like once a month. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do, we'll we'll dial that back. I can, and in fact, like maybe she doesn't like try to kill him right now. Maybe it's just like heavily applied that she's tried and that like oh, she yeah. wants to she's probably not trying to kill him tonight yeah because like two murders and a fucking that would be a lot span right. of two weeks she's like that's that's foolish i'm not gonna do that i'm right. not gonna do that to this family yeah she's <laughs> <laughs> the family definitely just will like catch on and the audience will catch on to the fact that she is intending to kill her husband. yeah yeah yeah, but it, it's probably a little bit messy to have, like, one of the bowls poisoned while we got all this other shit going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, we have a lot enough. of stuff to keep track of. Yeah, we can't we can't be trying to kill people. I guess I, I guess I can also see, instead of, like, her freaking out about Donnie saying, like, oh, I gotta hurry up and clean it before or whatever, maybe it's something like, oh, <laughs> gotta clean the stain before yeah. Donnie sees it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> drat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe just kind of just free and bubbly. Right. Yeah, I, I see that for her. Like, mm-hmm. she's very fiendish, free spirit. Yeah. Just like this evil, she's like, fey creature. She's as free as her titties will be. I feel, I'm feeling pretty comfortable in what we're envisioning and imagining this second part of Zoe and Nicole's interaction. Mm-hmm. Should we move on to Carol and uh, David? Yes. Absolutely. And I don't know if there's a lot to be said here. Um, I know we've kind of discussed this bit as kind of a quiet reprieve from like the crazy, like getting stoned and venting in the garage and Mm -hmm. like the weird preparations and tits in the kitchen. We kind of keep coming back to David and Carol just kind of having this quiet, shitty conversation. (laughs) Just like shitty catch up between a distant mother and son where he's like trying to they're both trying to start a conversation but neither of them really want to talk to each other so it's kind of just a lot of 
So what are you doing tomorrow? Yeah. Oh, I, nothing. What are you doing tomorrow? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Can I suggest a location for this conversation to take place? Sure. What if like David kind of s- not storms off angry, but like needs some air because of the interaction between him and Donnie. Mm-hmm. What if he goes outside and he sees his mother kind of like out on like the porch or just kind of like has like outside seating where she's just drinking her drink and kind of looking off into the distance Mm -hmm. and just kind of vibing to herself. And that would also make sure that like Zoe doesn't have a chance to run into David because the last time we saw Carol was in the kitchen or dining room. And I imagine those two places are fairly close together. This just gives it a little bit more separation. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I can see that. And I imagine the whole like first scene, like the introductions and all that is kind of in like the entry, mm-hmm. like living room, like the den kind of right next to the, we don't have, we don't have a house. We don't have a floor plan, but mm-hmm. like I imagine the door, like we walk in the entrance and there's like a, a den or a family room mm-hmm. that's kind of right there. That that's kind of where all those kind of that whole first scene happens. And then we break off into the kitchen and the garage. And um, I like the idea of outside. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it would be really nice to to do like golden hour, like sunset. I think that would look really pretty. And it would also be a good transition from like showing up to the party. And Mm -hmm. then because I imagine when they go to hide the body, it's night. Yeah, Yeah. I imagine that, too. So maybe like establishing that passage of time would be smart. Yeah, Yeah, I can see that. I'm cool with that. Can I ask you guys something? Mm -hmm. Do you guys picture Carol smoking? Because I do. I just was thinking that. I picture her smoking. That's so fair. I just pictured her like offering David a hit of her cigarette. Yeah. Oh, it'd be funny if David had like (laughs) had like a jewel or something. He's like, no, I'm okay. Oh my God. (laughs) If anyone's having a jewel, it's fucking Lonnie. I'm new age mom. Yeah. No, No, dude. I see Lonnie as like grassroots. Like she's all papers. Like, like weed or. Yeah. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if you were also talking about like hand rolled cigarettes. Oh. I feel like she, I can also see her like getting a nicotine buzz. I imagine, I can imagine her with like a really yeah, dumb Yeah, I picture vape. her smoking cigarettes. Yeah. That's so fair. Either cigarettes or like a really dumb vape, just kind of like, just passively around. Just I clouds. think she'd smoke cigarettes because they're sexy. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I think cigarettes are so much sexier than vapes. And yeah. if that means we perpetuate uh, a culture, so be it. It's for the art man. Mm. <laughs> Y'all make your own decisions. <laughs> yeah. Is there cigarettes that we can buy that people can just like smoke and not die? Yeah, there are like prop cigarettes. Okay. Apparently they suck ass. I can imagine. You know what we could do too? We could probably and we could probably do those CBD cigarettes. Maybe. Or just don't inhale. Right. Yeah. Well, you don't. I have- feel like a good actor could smoke something without actually getting the effects of it. Yeah, but I think we budget. should buy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We, we we should buy prop cigar cigarettes yeah. and probably prop joints yeah. and like prop weed and shit. CBD. No, I agree. There prop. are uh, CBD still has effects, so I don't want to put agree. someone through several takes of that if they're not ready. Agreed. We can have that conversation when that happens. Totally. Which, but like that being said, I do agree with you, and I I agree like not forcing anyone to take any substances yeah. for our film. Yeah, I think that scene's really pretty. You know, out in the sunset, mm-hmm. um, and I I like the idea of it just kind of being quiet. Yeah. Awkward. That's fine. Even a little sweet. I was going to say, I feel like this is kind of our, and and we can debate this, um, but I think this is our, our touching moment, our moment where we're just kind of taking it all in, you know, like it doesn't have to be like touching as in like, she's looking at him and saying like, oh, I love you and you're the best son, whatever, yeah. but touching as in like, in their own way where like, you just kind of, you feel the distance yeah, right. and And you feel kind of bad about that. Mm -hmm. It's probably one of the first times that there's not like this aggression. Yeah. Like it's still like a quiet acceptance Mm -hmm. of the broken relationship. Yeah. But it's not yelling. It's not like made into a joke. Yeah. And it's Mm -hmm. not yelling and it's not cussing and it's not anything. It's just kind of, so how's work? Yeah. It's just kind of sad. It's just kind of sad. Yeah. And... I think it's another good like bounce board for comedy mm-hmm. to like smash cut to <laughs> and smash cut away from. Well, I mean, because like if this is the scene we end things on, the next part is the dinner, which is like such a wild time. Going oh, yeah. From- yeah. Maybe we need a minute. Yeah, exactly. Between. Yeah. So true. Especially coming from the bickering and like the fast paced, loud, mm-hmm. like stylized introductions. This little like section is probably going to be a good reprieve for like the audience to catch their breaths yeah. before we dive into corpse at the table. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Right on. Yeah. I feel good. And, and I guess it's worth saying too, that this scene, Johnny and Lonnie in the garage and Nicole and uh, Zoe in the kitchen are all kind of happening simultaneously. Simultaneously, We're kind of cutting Cutting back back and forth, but every like 30, 40 seconds Mm -hmm. or or less. Yeah. Like they're each going to get multiple sessions of screen time. Yeah, Yeah. totally. Um, I'm I'm feeling really good about that. I like that. I, uh, I'm liking these little, purposes that we have going on in each scene like i establishing something and and driving the story into like a di- into a direction i really like that fuck yeah fuck yeah and then dinner dun 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 dun, dun. So we've got all of those groups of people doing their own thing and then you wonder where's donnie <laughs> well the audience starts to wonder where's donnie so the family all kind of comes together. They all sit down for dinner. Zoe and Nicole have got the food that they've prepared so lovingly. They've all got everything all set out. But there's still no Donnie. How do we want to introduce Donnie and Ronnie to the sitting guests at our table? I think the the funniest way I could imagine this going where it doesn't look too awkward um because i feel like it would look awkward if donnie was like hoisting up, oh like, yeah you know, whatever and like sit him down i think it'd be funny if like dad was in a roller chair yeah that's what yeah that's <laughs> what donnie i see too is just <laughs> yeah for sure and dad <laughs> does he play a song oh shit maybe that's, that's part of the ceremony that i think we should like figure right. out right i think he might like play some stupid fucking song mm-hmm don't you think if we can find like or if we can figure out like a jingle uh, for the tire shop? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. I can imagine that. That would be good. Uh, but also the thought of like, OK, now we're in the realm of cults. What's cult like? You know, I feel like playing like the tire king song, whatever. That is more of like, oh, he was my dad. And so this is a personal thing. He loved this song. I love yeah. him compared to. We bury, we have, this is what we do with our dead and we have a meal with it. Da, 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 da. We honor its life. <laughs> right. This and that. And it's so funny <laughs> if we heighten, like we honor its life and then the end just <laughs> right. <laughs> fucking asshole. I was thinking more like the final countdown, like something yeah. like that. Like some, like Rick roll. Mm-hmm. Like how about, what about this to like kind of go with the cult vibe, but also like be funny. What if he like, so the family's around the table, Donnie comes in alone and like sets like a little boom box on the table or something like that, plays it. And it's like the super like old fashioned, like culty chanting or something like this is like fucking Latin or whatever. And then as he walks away, like the disc is scratched. Mm. So we just like are watching the family all like stand in this quiet room. While you just hear, like, demon, demon, aka demon, me. Oh my <laughs> god. And then Donnie like comes back in and he's like, g- 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 yeah. <laughs> and he like oh, smacks so it and like gets it to work right. Yeah. And then he leaves again. <laughs> demon, 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 demon. <laughs> it would be really funny too if like. We see Donnie pop in in the stereo, right? Yeah. And it's not like uh, an original like CD. It's like a mix that he made. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it says and like dad's mix on yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> dad's hits or whatever. Yeah. And like he's just like looking for the song. Oh, guys, it like, could be Enya. It could be. Oh, Anya. my God. <laughs> That's Dude, right. He could, I like the idea of like flipping through like four different songs. Yeah, and it's he's like, like Hold Anya, on. ACDC, Rick Roll. I mean, we probably don't have the rights for any of those. But, yeah. <laughs> and then he lands on like the chant that yeah. he that he has ready. <laughs> don't worry. We're not going to make any money from this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about copyrights. No one will see this movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll take everything you have. Oh, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Get in line. <laughs> <laughs> the government's uh, already doing that. <laughs> that could be fun. Uh, and that might and that might be a conversation for next episode. Mm-hmm. One thing I do want to discuss with you guys today is the transition from the scenes that we just discussed to the dinner. Does everyone just kind of slowly show up to the table? Or like I was almost thinking like Donnie ends up peeking into each of these scenes like a little more frazzled than before or something like that. And it's like, you guys, it's almost time. <laughs> that would be funny, too, in a very like Schmidt way. Yeah. He like pops on and he's like, 
Is anybody gonna come and set the table? Yeah, <laughs> god damn it. Yeah. yeah. I have so much to do. I and then the that. audience is like, what's he doing? <laughs> so he's interrupting each scene then. The one with Lonnie and Johnny, the one with Nicole and Zoe, and Carol and David. Mm-hmm. It's an option. I mm. that was my that I had that thought when we were talking about Donnie interrupting Johnny and Lonnie. Mm-hmm. Um I know we kind of since moved away from that, but I think it could be funny. Especially like linking those three together is like Donnie peeking in and it would be an easy way to, okay, now we jump into dinner. I think that'd be fun too. Yeah. I think the only thing that hurts us with that idea is, and and if this is killing my darling, let me know, uh, is the joke with Nicole asking Zoe like, oh, so who's, who do you, or how did you and David meet or whatever? And then it cuts on like Zoe's reaction. I, I think... think th- What do you think, Maddie? You guys are so romantic. (laughs) (laughs) I think we come back to them again Mm -hmm. at some point. I don't think that's the final cut of that scene. Okay. Yeah, I think we can still end that scene with having Nicole having her shirt on. I think we can still do the shirt off and the weird question and the big cut, Mm. but not at the... But maybe that just doesn't end the scene. so, So what if that's actually like the first set we do and then we cut to... Um, Johnny and Lonnie and then Donnie walks in interrupts then we cut to Carol and David Donnie comes in interrupts and then we do another cut of like Zoe and Nicole Nicole has her shirt back on or whatever but you see like a big wet stain yeah right and then Donnie walks in let's go right it doesn't really matter because we're gonna shoot them in chronological sequential order anyways and we can basically cut them together however we want Maybe. as long as there's like a beginning middle and end and mm. there's like places to cut between it mm-hmm. yeah. it doesn't really matter the order necessarily because they're all happening at the same time which could definitely be true um i also like the idea and i started to really kind of get excited about this in my own head when i pitched which if the pitch didn't land then that's fine but like the idea of kind of this like surreal cross conversation between Lonnie and Nicole as we like cut between their scenes. Like it's a little bit of a trip, a little bit of a transition and honestly just like a fun writing thing. Mm -hmm. I think it would be fun to pepper those in kind of throughout this sequence of scenes. Um, Because honestly, I just, I love when movies do that. So what if, so that idea, but like what if it was like throughout the entire short film leading up to the dinner? Yeah, I I think so. And I mean, I know like the three of us have been really excited about writing dialogue and like doing Mm. kind of a high production, very like artistic kind of a style. And so Mm. I've always I've always kind of seen that a dialogue is going to be our tool for like being artistic and doing transitions like the three of us love to do just like kooky transitions, Edgar Wright style, all that. So, I mean, I've been really excited about kind of writing those like transitionary dialogues that like can flow mm-hmm. um, and are I think the, I think they're a little treat for, I think the, for so the audience too. I think they're a good time I feel like a good example of that would be in everything everywhere all at once um, when uh, I guess spoiler alert when Wayman was talking to Evelyn and it was cutting back within those scenes but Waylon was still like talking and giving like his speech is, am, am, am I right on that? Or? Yes, I totally agree with you, but I think that's the what I don't like about the idea is that it makes the characters seem like they're not paying attention. Just like comments. It's more of a transition effect than like a like consistent a, thing. Yeah, like okay. a trippy, con- like a trippy conversation. Mm. More of like, gosh, is it quiet in here? And then we cut back to David and Carol, and it's quiet. Right. Like right. like little things yeah. like that. Okay. Mm. Yeah, that makes more sense. Or like, God, I'm hungry. And then we cut to kutcha, right. like someone else cutting meat. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Just that like makes a, l- a lot more sense. Little yeah. Easter eggs like that. Not. Yeah. Sorry if I got super confusing about it, but no, you're fine. no, I just I was like, we can't have someone off screen talking about something every time because it's lo- going to look yeah. like they're having a fever dream yeah, all the time. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. But especially with Johnny when he's when he's right, high, right. he can start to hear some weird shit. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, Guys, I have to tell you. I've been liking the progress you've been making. Mm-hmm. I f- am very proud of us. I am too. But I feel like we're I feel like we're really finding a solid vision for this movie. Like I'm really starting to see it. I agree. Oh, you guys, I'm really excited to cast. 
Oh, you guys. See that? Like, I'm not, if I, if I can be very honest with you right now, a little bit vulnerable. No. There's a level of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Please show me your butthole. You know what's good for vulnerability is blatant rejection. <laughs> <That's Yeah. funny. laughs> I, was, I was just going to say, like, that, that, that aspect makes me nervous a little bit. Casting. Casting and, like, figuring out budgets and figuring out like production stuff like it's exciting because it's like the next step you know but just trying to problem solve all of that it's a little intimidating but i'm excited to do it can i be honest and vulnerable with you no look at that maddie what'd you have (laughs) (laughs) i'm playing yes please this entire project has made me nervous. Mm. Yeah, been, I've been stressed out this whole time. I've been stressed <laughs> out this whole time. It's scary. Mm. Never made a podcast. Very fair. Never committed to a project this long other than like a job. Yeah. Never made a short film this in depth. Mm-hmm. Successfully. <laughs> well, let's yeah. not say successfully yet. Casting and location scouting and all this stuff. Like it's all stuff that we've studied and talked about mm-hmm. and just like thought about so much like the three of us just like i love watching movies and behind the scenes and just like fucking talking shop and all that bullshit that no one else cares about um i'm glad you guys care about it with us yeah (laughs) dude like we're just three little nerds who care yeah no kidding episode 15 guys you've been with us for 15 episodes man give yourselves a clap on the back (laughs) and i would like to give a shout out to one specific listener this week jake Darling, Aww. you know who you are. Jake is my bestest baby friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's a title. I've been friends with him for a very long time, and he's a listener, and we love him. So Aww. we want to give you a challenge, Jake. Get challenged. And Jake's a fantastic photographer. Yeah, That's Jake's true. creative AF. So. He, so you better step your shit up. Remind me, he took your engagement photos, correct? Mm-hmm. He sure he did, did a great did. job. Yeah. Was killer. yeah, we looked hot. Yeah. yeah, we did. Well, I looked hot. Yeah. <laughs> I look the same. Yeah, Austin, Austin looks the way I always look, look like a puppy dog. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what should we give Jake as a challenge? So we've done yellow, mm-hmm. blue, I guess, technically. You know, we could also, we could keep doing your favorite color and like give us a photo, a fun photo of your favorite color. I've got an interesting challenge idea. Yeah. Let's hear it. So this idea was built on the technical terms of camera knowledge and things like that Mm -hmm. uh maybe it would be fun to give jake a challenge to tag us in a photo using boca okay a fun picture of boca yeah take a cool picture of something with boca for the audience out there would you mind explaining what boca is sure so when you've seen a, sh- a photo and the background's out of focus and you start to get those big circles or sometimes they look like hexagons, that shape is called bokeh. And it, it's what happens when the f- image is so out of focus that you start to see the shape of the aperture of the lens. And so that's why you'll see sometimes it's a five-sided pentagon, as all pentagons are, <laughs> or a six-sided hexagon, as all hexagons are. <laughs> nice. Or sometimes, or a circle, or a circle, a uh, circle bar. All kind of dependent dependent on how the lens is built, and mm. so uh, I think that'd be fun. I think that'd be a fun challenge. I think that'd be fun too. Swain, I have to tell you, have you seen Jurassic Park? Uh huh. You remind me of like the little DNA character, little anime character who explains <laughs> the rules of the world. Oh my! <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. I should rewatch Jurassic Park. You just you're just teaching us every single time. <laughs> wow. You know what's occurred to me? Mm. We kind of set out to be educational, but we never really take a lot of time to like do that. Yeah, that's not our main purpose, I guess. Yeah, I, I would say our main purpose, based on the surveys that we took from you guys, is to entertain and yeah. to be funny, <laughs> to be funny, and to, uh, but also to still have that like in depth look of yeah the the behind the scenes process yeah. mm-hmm. and kind of make the community a part of the art. Yeah, absolutely. And so I guess you know, on that level, if you have 
questions that you think that we could answer if you're like, what the fuck are they mm. talking about? Why do they keep talking about this thing that I have no idea what it is? Yeah, find us on social media. We're on Instagram, Room Tone Podcast. We're on Facebook. Send us a message. Tag us in a post. Who cares? Uh, ask us your question. Yeah. We would love to answer. We're always looking for viewer engagement. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if you ever feel like engaging, let us know. We want this to be a conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, it's occurred to me 15 episodes in, I don't know if we've ever uh, explained what room tone is, Mm -hmm. which I think is so. Can you explain what room tone is? No. (laughs) Austin, what is room tone? So room tone is the ambient audio that you record um, within a room in order to capture any various noise elements that get into your recording and essentially extinguish that and make your uh, to allow your recording to become a little bit more crisp. And so for those of you who have wondered why the podcast is called that, that's why. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, like, we kind of explained that in Session Zero, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, because, like, remember that was the one we were first picking the name. We are like, totally. Room Tone. Oh, yeah, uh, Room Tone. It's, God, yeah. it's been so long. Dude, well, listen to episode one. I listened to episode three or four the other day, the one with, like, the shitty, shitty audio. Oh, God. Oh, that's rough. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so thank you everyone for wow. staying with us that long. I'm so glad you guys stuck around until no we found the money for some decent microphones. Oh my god, it's terrible. Wow. Loyal, loyal fans. On the next episode, we plan on finishing up our uh, deep dive into the scenes, heading into Act 2 and finishing up with Act 3. We'll be discussing more about the dinner and what will be happening uh, within that hell yeah this scene. might this might be our last step before really jumping in and writing the script yep you know we're getting all these beats and we're gonna start putting some real dialogue on them yeah start putting asses to chairs start putting asses to chairs baby <laughs> but until then pause for room tone <laughs>